Hi again guys and welcome to the 40th place pick out of my top 50 favourite cars in the world for 2018 and now we're getting into some more vehicles which you might not expect to be this high on the list. And of course, as I've said before, the list is very fluid and if I actually had the opportunity to own some of these cars, I wouldn't necessarily choose them over vehicles that come lower on the list and that goes for the entire list, even the top 10 in some cases because when you're factoring in the difference between a favourite car and, say, a dream car, I view those as very different things. A favourite car is almost as an art piece, if you want to look at it that way. If, for instance, you look at a really nice painting, you might really appreciate it, but you wouldn't necessarily need to own it for it to be your favourite. In a likewise way for me, many of the cars which are on this list are my favourites, that's why they're here, but at the same time, I don't need to own them. And there are some even in my top 10 which I feel that way about. I adore them, but I still don't need to own one to feel that way about it. Whereas others, what I would call dream cars, are different to that. Those are the ones which you actually love and want to own. And to me, there's a big difference between the two. Now, I would put this particular vehicle, a car which I have discussed a number of times on the channel, in fact, even in my Gran Turismo 7 wishlist series, this is one of my favourite classics, but it's not one of my dream cars. It's the kind of car which, if I had the money, I would probably buy something else. But that doesn't detract from the love which I have for it. And the car in question is a vehicle which not many people talk about compared to many of the others on the list, the Isso Griffo. This car comes in a number of different versions, up to an ultra-rare 7.4-litre version. The one which most people tend to view as the top of the tree is the 7-litre. As you'd assume, with an engine that kind of size, it is American. Italy doesn't tend to have engines that big. They, especially back in the day, like to go somewhere around 3 to 5 litres, that kind of region, especially around 4. So this was much, much bigger. And in a weird kind of way, and I believe I have touched on this before with the Griffo, this reminds me of almost like the old school equivalent of something like a Pagani Zonda and Horatio Pagani's vision for that car, because... There's one thing that I adore when any type of car does it, be it a supercar or otherwise, and that is when you take real strengths from two or more countries and combine them to make something that is better than the sum of its parts. For instance, the McLaren F1. British design, German engine, works great together. The Pagani Zonda, German tech, Italian design, brilliant result. And for me, the Griffo is like that. You've got Italian style, and then American power, and also, at the time especially, American reliability, which of course Italy's cars aren't exactly known for. Now, I'm not saying American cars are perfectly reliable, but they're a lot cheaper to replace parts for in comparison to an Italian exotic. They can easily put out big power and big torque, which for a car like this is really perfect. It's almost like Italy's equivalent to something like a Jensen Interceptor. This was actually one of the fastest cars in the world. A lot faster, in fact, than a Jensen. Now, the 7 litre, and I believe the 7.4 even more so, is a car which is capable of over 170 miles per hour. If I recall correctly, I think the 7 litre, which is my favourite overall because of the styling as well, can do around 170, 175 Whereas the 7.4, which is super rare, and I don't think quite as pretty, can do around, I think it was 186, something like that, which is incredibly fast, especially for its age. And for a car of its type, that's very quick as well. Now, as far as the rest of the vehicle, this really is one of those classics for me which just ticks all of the boxes of what makes me love a car. It's not necessarily technically advanced or even revolutionary in any single specific way, it's just one of those cars where everything falls into place perfectly. Like a Cobra for me, or like the Mosler MT900, it's just a car which does everything right. Is it perfect? Well, objectively speaking, no, because no car is perfect. Everything can be improved, apart from the Zonda. <laughs> but even then, that's when it becomes subjective, of course, because everyone would want to change some little thing about some car, maybe even their dream car. Now, for me personally, there are cars which I wouldn't change a thing about. And although this one is much, much further down the list, I would actually say that about this one. To me, the Griffo doesn't need to change anything. And that's one of the reasons why my favourite version is the 7 litre and not the 7.4. 
because as I've mentioned before, my favourite cars are not just the fastest cars because. I will often like the slower version of a car. For instance, my favourite version of the Panos Esperante is the base model. My favourite version of the Maserati Quattroporte is the base model. My favourite version of the Aston Martin Rapide is not the S version. It's the standard one. I prefer the Zonda F over the Cinque, on and on. I often prefer the car in its purest form. And to me, although this isn't the base model, it's kind of the pinnacle for me. Again, like the Zonda F. So it's a car which I wouldn't necessarily buy because A, they're stupidly expensive these days, but justified as well. So if I had that kind of cash, I would buy something else. But it's the kind of car which puts a smile on my face. I love everything about the Griffo. And it's one which, in a weird kind of way, definitely does deserve to be talked about more, because this is a really good exotic. And it doesn't get the same kind of publicity as some other cars of the time, which I would say aren't necessarily as good. But that's it for this pick overall. Of course, you can check out all of the other episodes in this series by clicking through at the end of this video. But for now, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>